Hey guys, we're back with another VOD review of today's match in Apex once again. It was Afrika Blue versus Rogue, the rematch of the APAC Premier quarterfinals, where Rogue won 3-1, and of course they went on to win the entire turn. So once again, it's just going to be a simple VOD review, just um, yeah, go through the games, see what's up, and see if we can find some, some cool details to point out. So let's jump right in with our first map, which was Nepal. So let's start with the compositions. On the side of Afrika Blue, we have two, two, two tanks, two supports, and a double dive with the Genji and the Winston, and you add a McCree in there. Okay. On the side of Rogue, a much more, still a 2-2, but this time with a Reinhardt. So much more uh, kind of like backline focus to protect the the McCree, the hit scan that you're going to have in the back on this uh, Sanctum part of Nepal. And they will have a Reaper, which is not the case for a Freak of Blue. Okay, let's go. Oh, we're getting... There we go. The volume should be good. <clears throat> so as we mentioned in our previous spot review, the last one we did, um, this Sanctum is all about what you do at the start and on every push, which side you choose to go. And that kind of determines like how the fight's going to happen. Now, a lot of teams have been kind of favoring this uh, left side over here. Um, it makes sense if you have those hit scans to give them some range and to potentially like show them um yeah just you know give them some space to work with basically now yeah rogue has a big shield which which um Afrika doesn't have so you can see the winston in here it was kind of like just waiting for maybe an opportunity to jump in but he has to keep his shield cooldown ready right whereas like reinforce can just kind of stand in here and just put a shield and protect everyone so it's it's this simple change of what main tank you play kind of changes how, how the fight plays out they just use this bubble there try to try to protect his team a bit but the uh, winston's shield is only like 600 damage whereas um uh, reinhardt's is uh, 2000 so they lose Adam, their tank, early. The Genji tried to jump in and didn't get much. And at that, that point, a freaking blue kind of just has to retreat. Uh, by the way, Arhan, the Genji on the side of Afrika, he's he was, I think someone said, kind of considered the best Genji in Korea, even though everyone's been going on about Haxel from uh, Runaway. But apparently he's a very good Genji player. I haven't seen him play too much, to be honest, though. So after this initial fight, we see Rogue taking the point. They're starting to get that um, that percentage up a tiny bit, and we're gonna see two nanos on both sides. Well, one on either side. Let's go. They use it on Reaper. It's really good to use it on Reaper, even if he doesn't have Death Blossom, because he just does so much damage that it allows him to build his ult. So next push, as you can see, they're going to have not only the Death Blossom, but also Graviton. And for good measure, these two as well. Holding up, we're going to see... There we go, Graviton. Wait, did he use it? He did. Doesn't seem like they got too much out of it though. A uh, sound barrier came in for a freaky blue. Rogue um, doesn't have it, which which is I guess a bit odd. It means that um, the Lucio Yes Man on the side of that that's an awesome name Yes Man um, on the side of a freaky blue probably means he did a bit more healing um, than Nox ended up doing, which is. Not necessarily a bad thing, because most of the time you want your Ana to do the healing to make sure you have nano boost as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I think I think in this particular situation, probably saved them a bit. Helps Recry take care of Tavik. And we have Airhan kind of out, out duels the uh, AKM's McCree. But we're already at 50% for the side of Rogue, so it's still looking alright. A freak is gonna have Graviton coming up. They're gonna have Monkey Primal Rage, which is 
not the greatest ult, but there is some kind of like gaps that you can push people in, so it's not too bad. And they have Dragon Blade, of course, to combo with the Graviton. You gonna go for yeah? There we go, Graviton. We don't see too much. I think in terms of it's not related, but in terms of observing, I think whoever's observing these matches like needs to understand that, like when a graviton goes down, if you're showing someone who's who's in the graviton, like nobody can see what's going on. So it's not it's not a particularly good view, and I wish. That was one of the reflexes that these observers could take. Like as soon as you're in the graviton, like switch to another kind of view so that we can see what's going on. But it doesn't matter too much. That was kind of like a dry push on the side of rogue. Okay, so I'm using this terminology. Dry push means you're gonna do a push, not use anything. It's okay if you lose this push, right? You just want the enemy to use their ults, right? So they used dragon blade, they used graviton, and on the other side, okay, you died. That's fine. You respawn. You have plenty of time still because the percentage is not quite up there, and you come back. You have ults, so you're gonna be able to attempt a retake with uh, all these ults. They don't quite have Graviton, they should have it probably during this fight. I don't think they probably don't need to use it, I'd say. They use Nano, oh he got booped off, that was a great boop. Okay let's try to look at this again because they committed a lot of ults for that. Alright so this is Tavik. They just use the sound barrier, they just use the nano on him, and he's gonna start ulting. But because Winds died. Actually, yes, man. Wow, that, that's a really cool play. He ends up killing the the Zarya Winds. So Winds cannot use his bubble on the Reaper. And then the Reaper gets booped. And so you've kind of negated like this huge combo that Rogue has. Cool play. We don't we don't get to see that many um, really playmaking action from the Lucios, but that was definitely a, that was a good one. They used the Nano on Winston uh, again. That's not a bad target in terms of tanks, but maybe they could have cleaned up. I'm not too sure how that fight went on. What happened there? Let's let's just watch this again because I'm not sure. This was this was the fight before. Okay, they're going back in. Our hand dies. They're starting to. Okay, that's when Wins dies. They commit ults. He gets booped. Or was it Adam? Okay, maybe maybe it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily Yes Man who pushed him. Because here we see that Adam, so maybe Adam with the Primal Rage ended up pushing uh, uh, Tvik. Okay, so Reinforce kills Recry, AKM kills Yes Man, Unko kills the enemy Anna, Dayfly. Okay, so. Okay, they really felt like they had to commit the Nano there to try to keep the point. The rogue actually manages to retake. Okay, that's interesting. Kind of like a delayed fight where people were like slowly reinforcing, I guess. Okay, this is a point that I made um, in uh, Monday's game. But on this map, you do not want to stay on the point when you have it, right? Okay, so you see rogue. They just capture the point again. They go back to this kind of high ground where they can put up the shield, put their hit scan, which is uh, AKM right here that we see. And if the enemy team just rushes on the point, it's like easy pickings for them. You can just pick them from here. Oh, okay. They still leave a sneaky reaper here to Vic. So that if they do jump, you can shoot them in the back. Or if they go in the inside room over here and then drop under to go in the basement and on the point, you still have the reaper that's in here. 
but they're still positioning the shield here and AKM in the back with winds ready to graviton wherever they need to. Oh, also, also you want to position in the back, especially if you have high noon on your Mercury. That's pretty good. Oh, we didn't mention this. I'm not sure when it happened, but Recry actually swapped off of McCree. He was McCree at the beginning of the match, but I guess they still wanted to go for the Nana Blade. Here's the High Noon. Gets two. <coughs> Recry falls. A very, very aggressive counter pushing just before the respawn. That was a bit risky. Good thing they kind of backed out. But the fact that they're willing to do this, I think, is good. So, like, you won the fight. Like, th I'm talking about the previous fight, okay? Rogue wins the fight. They, they get, like, many kills, but someone's kind of, like, running away. So you very aggressively counter push, sort of, like, push after the fight into them to try to stagger them even more right um they don't get any additional picks off of that but the f the willingness to do that i think is is good because sometimes you are going to get a pick and you are going to stagger them even more especially when you're getting super close to 100 percent. so the end of this particular stage um i think it's good okay so um reinforce kind of whiffs his earth shatter there But there wasn't any kind of nano. Yeah, they don't have nano on the side of the freaking blue. So that, that Reaper ult is not as scary. He still takes out... Um, Recry still takes out Reinforce. Uh, you saw the nano on AKM on the McCree. Rogue is one of the team that is the most willing to just nano a McCree. Uh, because if, if we're talking numbers, okay, McCree's body shot, if you just left click, a body shot is 70, right? So plus 50% with the nano, that's 105. So you just need two body shots to kill any 200 uh, HP target. And if you do a headshot, which is supposed to be um, 140, all of a sudden one headshot just does 210 damage. So you can one shot every single 200 HP target. Right, and on tanks, you're also doing a lot of damage with with your body shots. So I think um, it's a bit it's a bit more uh, hit or miss, of course, than just nanoing a reaper and doing the Beyblade. But it still can can output a crazy amount of damage, and you got to be confident in your McCree, of course, to 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 make uh, good use out of that nano. But AKM is definitely one of the world's best McCree right now, so. He's, he's extremely confident on, on the McCree. So they take uh, stage one. Stage two. Uh, this is village. Um, let's go over the compositions. Oh, interesting. Um, let's start with Freaky Blue. They go for the same comp they started with. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Okay, two tanks, two sports, but with the dive tank Winston, and you add the Genji in there, so you have double dive. Two people that can just jump in and wreck your supports. And they have the McCree. So same question as before. You don't necessarily have a whole lot of... Uh, you don't have the big Reinhardt shield in front of your McCree, so it's really all about diving and putting the pressure onto the enemy team so, that, so as to free up your supports and your uh, McCree. Aside of Rogue, however, we see a Bastion, Mr. Bastion, okay? Still a 2-2, two, two. okay, two tanks, two supports, but with a Bastion in there, something that we've seen before. I think it was mo a lot of times Cloud9 who used to do this, do this. the, the old Cloud9 on, on Village, they do, did it like a, a really a lot. Um, NRG does it also with Seagull on the Bastion. Uh, the idea is really just to set up on the high ground that we talked about the other day and have the shield in front of the Bastion and the Bastion kind of just outputting crazy amounts of damage. So there we go, they're setting up up here. So you just, you put the shield and you set up at the door. So that way you have line of sight right here and you can just hammer through anything that goes in here, right? And no, no shields can really resist a Bastion's DPS when he's in turret form. <clears throat> 
Uh, Africa Blue, however, they choose not to go top this time. They go through the middle doors. So Tavik doesn't have the best uh, angle here. But at least now Afrika knows that the Bastion's here. Oh, they're actually doing a great job of avoiding like his line of sight. He's trying to repos reposition. So we saw him be like somewhere here. Then he kind of goes here, sets up here, doesn't see anything, changes position, sets up here, right? So Bastion in turret form is incredibly immobile. So you need to be willing to uh, get off the turret mode and then reset somewhere else to try to find these good angles. But Afrika Blue is just kind of mirroring this, which is really cool, right? They came out these doors initially, came out here. They, they wanted to go up here to take the high ground. They hear the Bastion, so they're like, oh no, forget that. They go up here, hide underneath, right? The Bastion sits here, so they go back this way. Right? Doing, doing a pretty cool job thus far. Now they're moving on point. Where's the Bastion though? Whoa, 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 whoa. Did he just jump? Yeah, I think he did that. He just kind of went behind and tried to do the cheeky jump uh, turret form. Because like you can get in turret form in the air, and then once you fall down on the ground, you're already ready to shoot, but... I mean, Afrika has a Genji, so I think they're pretty much all right dealing with the Bastion. So, yeah. Um, a lot a lot of times when teams went for these uh, ACAMs, just getting shots. So despite the Bastion falling down, they still win this, which is kind of crazy. I think many teams, when they did this kind of gimmick on Village, they would kind of all in on the Bastion, whereas here we still have AKM on McCree, right? I think I, I think maybe we saw like a triple support with just like Reinhardt, Zarya, and the Bastion. I think Cloud9 maybe did that. Back, no, 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 probably NRG with just Siegel on the Bastion. But here you still have a second threat, right? So it's not a single threat uh, with the Bastion. Um, however. When teams lose their Bastion early on this phase, usually they just swap out, right? Or if they're really close to an ultimate, he just comes back, uses the ultimate, and then swaps out. But here we see Tavik is staying on the Bastion. So I guess maybe since they won the first fight, he was like, okay, I guess I can afford to come back with um, another Nano Boost on McCurdy, by the way. Um, yeah, he probably thinks, I guess I can come back and set up again because we still have the point. But usually, once the first uh, tank mode comes from the Bastion, they usually swap. Okay, we we see a Reinhardt swap, a Winston swap to the Reinhardt on the side of Afrika. I don't think that's going to change too much. You need to find a way to jump on the Bastion anyway. So now they only have the Genji that can really deal with them. Oh, they Graviton though. Okay, so Graviton plus Dragon Blade, they take out the Bastion. Are they going to take the point? Or is AKM just going to go off and kill everyone? Okay, he goes down. So they retake the point. Uh, but used... Was it three, four ults? I think four ults. Yeah, four ults. But Rogue, now they have the ult on Bastion, so they still want to use it, apparently. It's interesting because yeah, a lot of bash uh, teams who do the Bastion would would usually swap here. Recry, recry, kills AKM. There's the graviton. There's the tank mode. Tank mode does crazy amount of damage. So they retake the point and reset up top. Okay, 
I don't know if um, Frika has the tools to to do the same thing again because they don't have graviton. They're gonna have it soonish, I guess. They're gonna have high noon pretty much, pretty soon. Uh, sound barrier pretty soon. They have nano, but the Genji blade, which is the big kind of the big damage ult that they have, is not is only halfway there. Trying to collapse from both sides. Oh, they nano the Bastion Rogue. Just nano the Bastion. They get Earth Shattered. He still survived. I'm not sure how he survived there. Genji's trying to come from like another angle to surprise them. So they're gonna go from the, the tiny doors over here, try to go this way, and then the Genji's gonna attack from the flank. And also the Zarya's here. I'm not sure what she's doing here though. Maybe to shield the Genji when he goes in? Maybe? But timing wise, that's a bit odd because if you shield a Genji that's reflecting, um, actually I'm not sure how that works. But it's going to nullify at least one of them, right? Either you're going to reflect the bullets and therefore the shield's not needed, or uh, the shield's going to take the damage and therefore the reflect is going to, you know, not be as useful. You have to time it properly. Like maybe you reflect first and then use the shield or something. So Nano on the Genji even though he doesn't have ult. So the idea is to have him do a lot of damage with just his standard attacks, try to build his ult so that he can have it during this fight. But Unko right away just nanos Vic on the Bastion. Okay, I think Genji just got stunned by AKM's flashbang, so flashbang here to stun this. We see Winds putting the bubble onto Vic. Reinforce is trying to put his shield in this direction because all of them, all of the Freaky Blue guys are coming from here. Drops his shield a tiny bit, so both of them get stunned. Wait, what happened there? Did okay. Reinforce doesn't have her shatter, but Adam is knocked down. Oh, he slept. Oh, okay, he got slept. So he got slept during the charge. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing Unko's in the back, like somewhere over here. Oh, it's blocked by the webcam. Okay, it's like somewhere over here. I think Unko's here. I'm not sure, but he landed a clutch sleep on Adam right here, who was charging into the Bastion. And Tvik has just a tiny bit of le uh, life still left. And he kind of jumps down. And now he's just going recon mode with the, uh, with the nano boost. And him plus AKM's damage just kind of cleans up. <laughs> that was really close. That was really close. And that's it. That's it, so some Bastion shenanigans, uh, Rogue takes map 1, and we're gonna move on to map 2. <laughs>